This Alaska Tiny Home video is brought to you by Amaze.com. Check out Amaze.com backslash THT. After I started living here for a while, I realized that my idea that I wanted like a bigger house for like family to come over and all that, like, eh, I don't need that. I, I kind of shifted as far as my future goes. I just need enough space for me to exist, like, comfortably, but I don't need a, like a giant footprint. I don't need to clean a lot. I don't need to have a giant like heating bill. Like it's really nice to have all the small things. And, yeah. So my cabin is actually right outside of Wasilla, which is going to be like right there in Alaska. We are about, I would say, five miles outside of Wasilla. I sit on a beautiful secluded lake right by the Talkeetna Mountains, just a little piece of heaven on earth, my little corner of the world. Okay, so it's technically a dry shed, so it doesn't have any kind of running water. So I have a glorious outhouse. Also, I don't have any propane or anything, so it is just solely electric. I cut from my parents' electricity on the property. So it was originally just a 10 by 18 shed, basically the shell of a shed with like half insulated, half not. And I went ahead and filled it in, put the deck on afterwards. I have no clue what the shed was used for before I got here, but um, it had an ATV door out the back that I had to frame in. It had hooks that I was assuming were for like meat hooks as far as like moose meat. It had some random weird things that I had to take out before I could even get started putting anything in there. Well, this is my house. I have a really small basic kitchenette. I'm not a chef, so I didn't need anything spectacular. Just stuff for the bare minimum, my tiny fridge, we have the handy little um, oven and stove top combination, I have storage behind it, I have my tiny little sink that's deep enough to do dishes in, it uh, empties into a five gallon bucket that I pull out and just dump into the woods when it's full or when I'm done with the sink, just enough water on um, demand that I can do dishes, brush my teeth, wash my face, things that I wouldn't want to go try to go do. Then I have my little dining area that is just an extension of the countertop that I built. I just stained it the same as with every one of my window seals and ceiling and everything. So actually with the cabinets, my friend was going through renovation, a kitchen renovation, and she had some cabinets and I took them before she like was gonna get rid of them and put them on marketplace or whatever. So two of my cabinets are that set and then this middle one that's underneath the stove, I actually created the outside and just put, um, like we created our own uh, drawers for it. We just put the drawer faces from two other cabinets that we had just salvaged. The stove top doesn't have any settings. So it's just, it gets hot and when it's hot, that's it. You can't turn it down, you can't turn it up. Um, and then with this uh, oven, in such a small space like this, this works as a second heater, so you have to like turn down your other heater so that you don't cook yourself out whilst cooking whatever you're cooking in there. <laughs> There's enough power that I can run my oven and every other electronic like I have in here. We made sure that we had the right uh, breakers and everything so we didn't trip anything, but yeah, all from that one electrical uh, source I have, I can run anything in here at the same time. So living alone in Alaska as a woman is a little bit interesting because you have like two main areas that you have to like consider as far as safety goes and that's the wild animals and the wild humans because humans. Um, so like I had to put two separate motion sensored lights on both ends of my house because um, if a moose walks between the house and the outhouse and you're in the outhouse in the middle of winter, in very little clothing because it's middle of the night and it's cold and you get stuck on the outhouse, it's not very fun. <laughs> um, so that just warns me for when there's a moose around is when it turns on. As far as bigger animals go or like people posing an issue, I just sleep armed. Like I, I'm not too far away from something that I could use to protect me. Hey everybody, this is Chris from Tiny Home Tours. Just want to thank all of you for watching today's video and also want to give a shout out to today's sponsor of the video, which is Amaze.com. 
So down below in the description, you'll see a link, omaze.com backslash THT, and you can click that link for your chance to enter a customized tiny home on wheels. That's up to $100,000, so it's any customizations that you like. So for example, with my school bus, I went more into the off-grid capacity. So a lot of solar, a lot of batteries, a lot of food storage. Whereas if you wanted a tiny home to take to tiny home villages, travel around that way, you can invest in a gorgeous kitchen, you can invest in massive glass windows, you can invest in a roof deck, up to $100,000. So with your particular entry, that goes to support a charity called PATH. They are currently working on ending homelessness. And obviously right now with everything going on with COVID-19, that is more important than ever. So not only does your entry go to a good cause, it also gives you the opportunity to win your own custom tiny home on wheels. So once again, I want to thank today's sponsor of the video. You can find that link at omaze.com backslash THT. I appreciate all of you for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. So for most of my house, I actually weathered a bunch of wood, sanded it and weathered it because I really like that style. I started with one thing and led to another, snowballed into most of my house is actually now just wood that's been weathered and polyed. So I put that into my shelves with just doing it like an industrial style with that uh, weathered wood. As far as my did like decorations go, I'm a little bit out there. So I have my parents, my favorite um, picture from my parents' wedding. And I just have some graphic art and some candles and stuff, a little mood setting. The candle is actually just a bottle of Crown Royal that they uh, cut, sanded so it's smooth and then poured in it. Someone uh, in Wasilla actually does a ton of them. She's named Spunky Monkey. By weathering the wood, I mean that there's just like, it's like a stain pretty much, that's all it is, but it's a weathering stain. So I just sanded all the wood down to where it was smooth to the touch, weathered it, and then, um, left it for like 24 hours and then polyed it a few times to make sure it was good to go. Yeah. Everything except for the floor because we couldn't readily get a, like to that super easy. Every wall and ceiling is pretty much stuffed with the best uh, insulation that you could find just because with Alaska that's one of the major hurdles that if you're living in it full time you have to think about. I wouldn't say there's much that I found that contradicts what people say about living in a tiny home. It's pretty much you're just a tiny house. So I do think that people like over dramatize having an outhouse because it's not that bad. There's only been a few times that I've had to chip the toilet seat up from ice, but honestly, that's not that bad. <laughs> it got down to like negative 20 one time here and I had to go take a shower. And I like for my shower situation, I am able to, I am beyond blessed. I don't have to go to a laundromat. My parents' cabin is like right over there and so I was able to walk there take a shower but on the way back my hair had frozen because it was so cold and it took a while for it to unthaw and I'm like just don't break it off don't break it off <laughs> yeah definitely would recommend building your own frame because when I had to take everything out of this we started putting everything in and realized that there was no insulation in the floor and that is a major no-no so after the fact I had to go underneath and like crawl army style to put insulation up and we had to actually jack the entire thing up a few inches so that it could fit underneath and yeah if you don't like if you're claustrophobic just build your own build your own frame <laughs> definitely helps so i like to mostly stylize with things that are either like quirky but definitely local so i have a few like um a few paintings that are from people in uh the valley, I have some, I think I got the hangers all from Homer, I would say. And then uh, the these two I actually did myself. It's pressed flowers from every uh, country that I went to when I was out abroad. So I think there's like eight different countries there, at least three continents. It would have been hard if I had transitioned straight from my last current living condition to here because I just had so much stuff and at that time I was so sentimental about it. But then going to a place where poorest country in the world, like 
no one has dinner for that night it kind of changes your mentality and like your perspective and to things that you have and you're like I don't need all of this so coming home I was able to like purge a lot of the stuff that I had that I didn't need so I was able to fit into a tiny space if I would have transitioned straight from that living to here I wouldn't have been able to do it because I would have tried to fit everything in here and it would have been hectic and cluttered and just a mess so right next to my water access is actually my little tiny, I mean my massive big screen 18 inch TV that is on a swivel <laughs> that I can pull out if I want to watch a movie. I can tilt it back if I want to watch it from my bed. Pretty much all you need when you get tired of looking at a phone screen for watching movies. And then as I said right behind it is my little five gallon bucket that I have attached to my sink pump that will give me just what I need. And literally not an ounce more <laughs> I actually just walk over to my parents cabin and fill it up but there's been times when that hasn't been available to me so we have a little store Matsu water where you can go and have like an on tab where you just rinse it out and then fill it back up and be on your way I'll get like two that time and put one in the closet and then in the very back I like wanted the illusion of a bigger area so I put in a giant mirror but they're quite expensive so I found a broken, um, discounted for only one panel sliding mirrored closet doors. We broke the frame off of it, put it on the wall, and then put our own frame around it just to give it a little bit more of like a protection. So when I was building this place, the number one priority was probably storage because when you only have 180 square feet, you, like, you have to be efficient with how you put everything and everything as a place. So I sat down one day and like designed out the best use for a bed and for me that wasn't keeping it like mobile like not like a Murphy style bed or something that collapsed it was letting the bed be a frame for storage underneath it I took some 2 by 12s did the same thing with uh, the weathering and put my bed behind it and then at the base of my bed I have my closet and some shelves and then Underneath it, I have even more storage for that. And then I have shelves right behind my couch, a little hidden um, latch that holds stuff underneath too. Just basically like taking all the space I could and creating some way to get to it so that I could have things there. I basically drew out what I wanted and I am beyond blessed to have a dad who's been a carpenter for like 40 plus years. Yeah, so he, did all the cut list and then I, and me and him put it together. I have a full size bed in here. I didn't need much more. It was just me and my tiny dog, so. I was broke, so I had to work on a budget. Um, I got the couch off of a lady from Craigslist and it was in her tiny house when she lived down on the panhandle somewhere but she was living with like her family of seven. So this couch has seen a lot of tiny house adventures. The frame is actually really cool. Yeah. So like I have all of my books and stuff in here. So I actually have an access to a otherwise unreachable portion of underneath my bed right behind my couch so that I can use that space for things like board games or just things that I would be able to just like hop up and grab real quick. And then behind my couch, I have all of my like books up there because I read way too much for a person who lives in a tiny house and just storage for things that I would want to be able to grab. And then underneath the bed is where I keep most of my storage for um, things that are like seasonal for me. I have space for my tubs, for like seasonal clothing, my snowboard and my boots go down here. Currently, a giant portion of down here is my cassette <laughs> collection. Um, but yeah, I just have space for all my tubs that I'm not gonna get to, or I'm not gonna try and uh, take out every day. When I was growing up, my dad used to play like all these classic rock, like 60s, 70s era, um, songs and cassettes over his giant speakers that he had in our garage and so whenever I'd go out there and do projects with him it would be playing from that and I would listen to that and I grew up around it and then when he had to get a new speaker because that one decided to poop out on him he uh, gave them all to me 
So I started from there and I kept on collecting. The one thing I did do on myself was the ceiling. Because <laughs> that took way too long and that was what I asked for. And my dad was like, okay, then you're doing it. But basically it's just giant sheets of OSB that I sanded down and stained. Well, I sanded and sanded and sanded to try and get the labels off and then I stained them. And then I polyed and polyed and polyed. <laughs> but I like how it looks like driftwood on the ceiling more so than just a normal boring. Because when I'm that close to the ceiling, like it, if you wake up and look at just a blank white me every day, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna wake up and look at really cool little driftwood-esque things. This little cabinet is my is my pantry. It holds literally everything in there. And you have to get crafty about what you all need and what you goes in like what you use regularly enough to keep on hand because you only have so much that you can keep. So it's mostly just like the basic staples that I would eat more regularly. And then if I get something that is outside of that, it's like, oh, gotta eat real fast because I don't want to take up space. Same with the fridge. That's like the, that's an unknown blessing is when you have a small fridge, you can't collect random condiments or like, why do you have this? Why do you have that? You basically just buy what you're gonna eat that night so that you can keep that space free for what you're gonna eat tomorrow night. I thrifted the um, coat hanger and then I just got some, my space is too small for my door. <laughs> so I got some pet food <laughs> mats instead of actual like chew mats, but they work. So you gotta work with what you got. When we started building this, we ran into so many issues with they just weren't meticulous enough with their cuts and they just weren't like they cut corners they didn't make things square or level and it was just a one hurdle after another uh taping and texturing this was so bad right behind the um shelves we actually have i my dad would say it was probably like legit an inch thick of mud because it was so warped that we had to just mud over it and so i'm like if there's ever another earthquake I'm just gonna all slide off <laughs> so on the same property is my parents cabin that allows me to have a place really close by that i am able to shower and do laundry if not there's a laundry mat right down the road but i also have occasional neighbors whenever they want to come and say hi <laughs> other than that uh it's basically just a little secluded lake up here that I get to enjoy the views and the water and the birds and just everything that comes along with having a little tiny lake front. So we actually built this deck around the same time that I was building the deck on my house because we wanted mutually, me and my dad both wanted something that we could go like sit closer to the lake and not be on gravel or just, just a little nice area. So. We built this around the same time and got it done and it is literally one of my favorite things is just sitting out here when there's because golden hours right at the base of that mountain so you have golden hours streaming across the lake it's so nice well it's it's super peaceful as soon as you like close the door all of the road noise is gone all of the like it's just a little like sound bubble in here so especially where i work for it being extremely loud for eight hours a day I come home and I'm able to like close that door and have like a time to a time and space to decompress from being super loud and super hectic and just be able to breathe and actually hear yourself breathe. <laughs> I feel like I would just recommend it. If you're thinking about it, you should definitely do it. It's been so much of a blessing for me to be able to like reevaluate as far as in my life what's necessary and then just having your own space is so nice. And then just, I, I think the biggest takeaway I can take from this entire build and living here is that I was able to build it with my dad and spend time with him and just learn at the same time, which was really cool. I feel like the experiences you make, like building your tiny house and living in your tiny house far outweigh being like, oh, it's not a conventional size house. Living out to nature definitely has its perks. Like I go hunting right outside my door. We just walk down across the lake. There's a little land area that goes around it. And then right on the other side of the lake, 
is a giant blueberry patch where that's usually where I spend all my time hunting is just eating the blueberries and being a emotional support. 